Hello there, Jonathan. Today is Thursday, January 15th. Now on to the main topic for today, vaccines. They're often viewed as a controversial topic. However, since I work in science, I rarely come across anybody who denies their effectiveness or claims that they cause autism. You and I grew up in a family that made sure we got all our shots, and for that I'm thankful. Unfortunately, there's a growing number of people out there who are afraid of vaccinations. They claim that they're dangerous or that they don't work, or if they're the tinfoil hat type, that it's a government ploy trying to control its people. Well, we've been giving these vaccinations for a long time, so we can look at the results and the research. It's rare, but children can occasionally develop bad reactions to these vaccines, including fevers or other complications. For instance, one in 3,000 children given the measles, mumps, rubella, or MMR vaccine can develop a seizure. Some ostensibly reasonable parents have looked at this evidence and decided to delay the vaccine in their child, hoping to skirt some of these negative side effects. However, when parents delayed giving the vaccines to their children, the rates of seizures actually increased rather than decreased when the children were 16 months of age or older. In other words, in an attempt to do good, the parents and the pediatricians along with them ended up doing harm and in the process left their children dangerously exposed to many of these pathogens that we vaccinate against. There's another story in the news right now about a measles outbreak in Disneyland. 26 people have been diagnosed so far. This highly contagious but highly preventable disease is now spreading in California. And California is one of those states known for the anti-vaxxer movement. The woman who first began spreading this disease in Disneyland wasn't vaccinated herself. As another example, in 2012, there were 48,000 cases of pertussis in the United States. To see those kinds of numbers in recent history, you have to go all the way back to the 1960s. This disease, caused by the bacterium Bordetella pertussis, is better known as whooping cough. I put a video in the description of an infant girl with pertussis. It's hard to watch. The disease is awful, but again, it's highly preventable. So what's my point? Hold on, gotta go get my soapbox. Science needs results. We need data, and not the cherry pick kind either. There's a common tendency to create a narrative based solely on logic. If I can reason it, it must be true. The problem with this approach is that it's only one step in the scientific process. When we use anecdotal evidence and logic based on previous knowledge, we're forming a hypothesis, a predicted explanation for an unknown reality. Here's an example. It's flu season. And I heard I'm supposed to get a flu shot, so I went and got one. And then I got the flu. I can't believe this stupid flu shot gave me the flu. I'm never getting one of those again. Sure, you get the flu shot and then get the flu. It's okay to question its efficacy. But you should go look at public health records and compile the available evidence to judge for yourself if the flu vaccine can in fact cause the flu. That way, you can make an informed decision. But sure, it might be onerous. If you're going to be lazy, then you might as well trust the experts whose job it is to make these sorts of judgments. And their judgment for you is to get a flu shot. We as underinformed individuals seek to find explanations for what we don't understand. But in many of these cases, we're just identifying the questions to ask. Being skeptical and inquisitive is encouraged, but we must take the time to do the research or to go find someone else who has. So with that, go get a flu shot. And I'll see you Monday.